honks. Hey guys. Hey honks. Everything's bad. No, I said yeah. Okay, everything is bad. Everything's bad. Everything's, bad. everything's the it. worst it's ever been in my life. Ha <laughs> ha. Would you say that it actually is? Can I say something? Because I know you went through a bitty, pretty big. So this is a bit worse. Well, I've actually had two. But there, there's the <laughs> that everyone knows about, and then there's the there's the, oh, the, the secret. The, there's the se there's a sape. Ah, a sape. Yeah, yeah. So this is worse than those times. Oh, Lee, you don't want to hear about my sape. <laughs> don't want to get you horny get this early in the episode. Does it make you uncomfortable? How oh, horny it makes make you? Does it make you a little uncomfy to hear about my sape? <laughs> I'm sorry. Lee, you're looking good. Lee, you're looking like you're just fresh off a of safe. You want Ozempic? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're glowing. <laughs> <laughs> he is glowing. Lee, are you on that Kardashian Ozempic? What's it called? <sighs> no, I'm just bleeping most of what you already said. Why? Why? Because YouTube will take us down. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> you're going to bleep Well, it? I don't have anything to say to that. <laughs> All right, so Here's the thing, things are really bad. bad. Things are bad. Um, why are they bad? Okay, I I hate to tell the story, but I'm going to tell it anyway, even though we've been experiencing you. Yeah. Well, we already know everything that's going on. I'm going to say mine first because it's not as bad as what you're about to say. <laughs> okay. So we're going to lead into it. Okay, okay. Are you going to talk about last night? Yeah, I was going to talk about oh, last course, night. Of course, of course. And then you should talk about what happened during your set. So first oh, one, do yes, we yes. Okay, so Honk has two things. I have two things. Let's get into it. So first, starting off small, um, I was at this gorgeous theater, Largo. Uh, last week, I was watching my friend Bianca Cristoval perform. Ended up having a great night. Hung out in the green room for two hours with a uh, really big comic slash actor. It was- Why don't you say his name? Oh, I just didn't know if I thought it was, I was tagged. Okay. Uh, it was really, really fun. It was Zach Galifianakis. He was really, really sweet. Just such like a very personable, nice guy. Um, had like an amazing, amazing, like, you know, just a crazy night that that happened. It's just Bianca, me, Zach Galifianakis, and then uh, later the owner of the club, uh, Flanny. Anyway, so we're all hanging out. It's okay, great. that's a name. Leave the... He's Irish, so it's giving, you know... <laughs> You're not welcome. Okay, anyway, so it's giving not luck of the Irish for you. But anyway, so uh, go home, feel, and then like do like a bunch of writing, feeling good. Mm. Wake up that morning and I have, what is it, guys? Don't worry, I'll tell you. Negative $78 yeah. in my bank yeah. account. And that's one more time for the audience. It's negative $78 for my bank account. So that's really fun. That's really cute. Anyways, we get out of that. Then um, on Friday, I get hit up from this clothing brand. And they go, hey, Harper, we want to do um, a collaboration with you on TikTok. It'd be a 12 month long contract, um, eight grand a month, da, 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 da. And I'm like, oh, my fucking God. Oh, my fucking God. Like, are you kidding? Are you actually fucking kidding? And I like I just feel so relieved because I've been in like kind of a dark spot, whatever, la, la, la. Then <laughs> then they hit me up on Sunday and they go, ooh, ooh, ooh. and don't worry, they had already said over the contract and all that. And then they go, hey, 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 hey. Um, so actually upon further reflection and inspection on your Instagram, or sorry, on your, on your social media, we're actually going to have to bow out of the contracts. We don't think essentially we hate you. And we, essentially we don't want to align is... ourselves with someone. And I go, so what, you've never met someone who enjoys a casual fling with their brother. Yeah. I can't make jokes about that anymore. No, you can't. I can't make jokes about any fork night in time in my life. No, because guess what? It's because it's a pussy world. It is a fucking we live, pussy world. Because we live in fucking pussy world. It's really frustrating. And then I didn't get, I think I told you guys that, I don't know if I said it on Patreon or on here, but then I also didn't get a writing job. Yes. And yes. It, was, it was also probably because they checked out this podcast I actually learned after the fact. <laughs> yes. And they said, they said, oh, it's a little, not really um our brand. And I said, okay. I said, okay, okay. okay. You fucking pussies. Everybody's a pussy. Only the real ones aren't pussies. And there are real ones out there, but there are few and far between. Yeah. So you could say I'm in kind of a hell of my own making and I'm really frustrated and just learn the lesson the, for the millionth time. Don't spend money you don't have. So what I've signed up for UCB 101 and John Rosenfeld um, acting class. Yeah, if, you said I'm going to go full LA, most expensive places to go in the world. I said I got dreams, sweet. Oh, but you want to know something cute? Yeah. I, I did um, book a part in a um, short film and that, that shoots in... And it's it, the script's really funny. And that's in um, this comic wrote it, um, but it shoots in um, April. No, that is cute. Is it said, paid? It is paid. Thank God. Yeah, it's paid. So literally, thank fucking God. What is it? Uh, it's fucking low budget. So are you getting like fifty bucks a day? A hundred fifty a day. <laughs> screaming. So yeah. Screaming. 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 And honestly, yeah. cute though. Fun. It, it's Great. cute. It's cute. It's cute. And you know what? It's we we do we do things for a lot less. I'll tell you that. So. <laughs> And if you guys listen to Patreon, you really know what I'm talking about. But here's the thing. Yeah, it's uh, okay. So so I'm I'm in a hell of my own making. Just a reminder, everyone, don't ever spend money that you don't have because I was really sure that I was going to get a few things. And I really didn't. 
I really didn't. Yeah. So it's, now here we are. You know, life right now is extremely illuminating for what it is to be a fucking American, um, to mm-hmm. be a literal scraping to get by American. Everything in this country is so beyond fucked. I can't speak on my experience of living anywhere else because I've never lived anywhere else. Um, and it's just, it's a nightmare. This country, I don't know. It, first of all, living in LA, I mean, that's on us. That's that, on that, us. Here's the thing. I if will you're all leave- living in fucking Idaho, paying $30 a month to live in a house, good for you. But guess what? We've got dreams out here, baby. So that's what we're doing. Yeah, honey, we got motherfucking dreams And dreams out make here. you broke. Dreams make you fucking broke. I'll I, tell I you that. I do want to say, I totally recognize, like when I woke up and I saw negative $78 in my bank account. You're hanging out with Zach Galifianakis the next day or negative $78. And that's what happens. That was, that was... I, that was honestly, it was kind of poetic almost because to like have such like an inspiring, fun, crazy, cool night. And then just to wake up and go and humbled again. But I do realize that I am in a hell of my own making to an extent. Well, it's, it's now, also eggs are $25. So that's kind of neat. It's our, it, 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 that is kind of neat. Um, it is our cross to bear for living in the city. But here's the thing. I, I couldn't live anywhere else because it's a fucking nightmare because everywhere else is a shithole. I'm 90%. I was on this TikTok the other night. Oh, Jesus. No, I know. I was on this TikTok the other night and it really kind of fucked me up. And it was called like, they were talking about like the United States of nowhere, which they're showing how there are so 90% of the US is made up of these like, horrific suburban areas that have no unique architecture, no unique surroundings. You could show, they were showing pictures of like, you know, just parking lots. It could have been in Fresno. It could have been in fucking Wyoming. You have no idea where you are in the United States most of the time. You are. Because it all looks the same because everything is just like this cement horseshit hellhole with like a fucking Arco and a yeah. Walmart. And that's like, that's America. That is and, America right and there. And then you got all these people fucking ad- addicted to fucking medications and drugs and alcohol being paid nothing, working in shitholes all over the U.S. Everybody's fucking miserable and trying to scrape by. Nobody fucking can because we have, and we have to fucking pay health care. It's just what a nightmare this country is. And they were talking about this United States of nowhere shit. They were then comparing it to like, oh, look, you know where this is? Paris, fucking Italy, Spain, you know, beautiful places that exist in the world. And they're like, this is why America suffers because we are so architecturally hideous because there is nothing here for people to feel individual except for our stupid fucking politics of like, don't tread on me. Everything in this country is fucking oh, horseshit well, and yeah, ugly. No, there was, there was, uh, there was, um, I saw, I saw something similar where they were like, they were like, the reason why people dive so deeply into politics and make that their whole personality is because like people don't like have like we don't have um like white people in America don't really have like a culture. And so politics is kind of like a culture. So that's why like you cling so so deeply and dearly to it. And it, and and it's just like it's it's wild how unidentifiable so much of the United States is. Well, yeah, because it's like it's a capitalistic hellscape, and so they, 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 they well, okay, they they throw everything up for five dollars, and then they charge you three grand for a shoebox, and then you go, okay. I mean, even like in Charlotte now, like that city is extremely expensive, um, and it's it's happening everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's just becoming. I keep, I was just telling you, like, I keep seeing all these videos on TikTok, like recession meals, recession meals. And I'm like, what actually is fucking happening? And then miserable. We're all miserable. And the banks are crashing. I don't know what's going on. Janine posted this thing. I don't think it might not be on her story anymore, but she posted this, um, this like little graphic of what they could have done with the budget. Fuck. It's not on her story. Um, but she posted this graphic of like what the, um, the $77 billion deficit could have gone to okay. instead of just bailing out like the rich and like, we could have cured so many things, but instead it's like, it just went to like, you know, to, it just went to the rich essentially. I don't even understand it. I don't understand it. All I know is that we live impoverished lives and it's so hard to get ahead. Mm-hmm. It is oh, so well, you hard. Said, okay, what was that podcast that you sent me? I'm just about done listening to it, it. It was Life Examined, I think. Yeah, and this this Harvard professor mm-hmm. um, was talking about like what it takes to be successful. And um, obviously, you know, this man is extremely smart. La la la. He's going on and on. And at the like, you kind of get down to it. And the man interviewing him just goes, 
Wow, well, I can't help but feel depressed right now. So essentially what you need to be successful is um, already coming from wealth and um, a family to get you in the foot in the door. And then he's like, essentially, yes. Nepotism. And I'm like, Coolio. Yeah. And then Gab and I were talking and I was like, you know what? My parents can get me. My dad can get me some of the weed he grows in his closet. <laughs> And my mom can give me a headache because that she just and there and there's she doesn't my have money to give. She just has unsolicited advice. So yeah, it's getting a little bit difficult up in here. Secondhand smoke from my mom, so I will die of lung cancer probably because of my mom smoking my whole life, and yeah. that's that. And that's what we have from our parents. It's just it's a wild time to be alive. This country astounds me. Okay, um, okay, but start talking about your week because I want to so hear about that. My week, I was in um, where did I go? I was in Washington all weekend. The shows were whatever. The one in I had my last show in Washington was in um, Squamish, which was beautiful. Um, and of course, three minutes into my set, which already wasn't going well, a fight a fight breaks out. A man, I think, what it looked like started arguing with his wife and she pushed him. There was pushing. Then you see the guy fall to the ground. There's hitting. Everybody in the crowd rushes. So it was a, a husband and wife or I, something. I believe so. Okay. It was, and like everybody in the fucking crowd rushes to, you know, these people fighting. There's some old white guy in the corner yelling, get out of here, pussy. Get out of here, you fucking pussy. Fuck you. He's just sitting there screaming at this guy. I'm on stage. I'm on stage holding a microphone like a fucking asshole, just like, all right, guys, whenever you're done, I guess I'll get back to my set. And and like that's and then it, then Butch, the other guy we're on the road, then he comes out and then him and I are both standing there on the stage looking around being like, what the fuck do we do? And then Felipe is behind the curtain whispering one liners to Butch to yell out at the audience to make him laugh. They are working. <laughs> um, and it was just it was so much calamity. And then I have to get back into my set. And I was just like. Where do we go from here? And that's why stand-up comedy is one of the most degrading and embarrassing career choices. Because people don't take you seriously as a comic. People no. think you're a fucking clown. We work. They think you're a fucking court jester, just they like we work... giving them the razzle dazzle. Mm -hmm. I get up there every time I get on stage. Somebody, somebody starts fucking. I start talking about. Uh, I, I started talking about something. You know, like having tattoos, and some guy goes, "Show." And I yell back at him. I was like, they're on my fucking neck and my fucking face, you asshole. You can fucking see. Show us. Woo. Get, shut the fuck up. Oh, yeah. You think I'm going to come fuck you? Right? Yeah. Woo. The come talk to me after the show. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Stop. Stop. Don't go to a comedy show and yell things out at comedians. We work really hard at our fucking jobs. And you guys are honk, no fat, one gives drunk a fuck. losers. No one gives a fuck. And, and that's I mean the kind fat of in the way of just like it's an attitude. Like, fuck off. <laughs> and then don't come for me and be like, don't be fat. I'm not being fat. Just fuck you. Everybody shut the fuck up. Honk's riled right now. I'm riled. Everybody can <laughs> fucking fuck off. Honk started sweating when she started talking about America. So and it's <laughs> yeah. been kind of going downhill from there. But um, she's on she she took a Vyvanse, so she's ready to fucking I'm go. I'm on my ADHD medication. She's ready to fucking f fist all of us. That's yeah, why she's, I'm ready she's to fucking go. Rants. I'm on my fucking medication. I'm unmedicated and I'm uncaffeinated and I'm ready to fucking snooze yeah. through life because yeah, I'm yeah, ready yeah. to commit suicide. And that's kind of what it is. But don't worry, I'm too I, pussy, so I won't do it. I'm still having Lexapro withdrawals a little bit. We're about three weeks out, I think. Could've no, be, I think that's could just be a depression month. coming back. But Could be. <laughs> Next thing is up. Don't get me riled up again about the United States of fucking fart-ass America. Last night... My boyfriend is, we were at my house watching. All of us were there. So Jan so Janine and I are upstairs. You and John are downstairs. I'm watching that new. We're watching Swarm. Swarm. Guys, got to check it out. It's, it's so, so good. good. Amazon Prime, Donald Glover's new show. Fantastic show. Shout mm -hmm. out to Swarm. Shout out to Billie Eilish. Um, love her. Anyway, John's like, I'm going to step outside, smoke a cigarette. He goes out to his car to smoke a cigarette. And he was going to drive home to go feed his cat. But he was, you know, he was just like outside smoking a cigarette. <sighs> He calls me and he's like, dude, these cops just rolled up on me, flashed a light in my face and uh, were like, what's going on? And he's like, nothing, just smoking a cigarette. And they're like, everything good? And he's like, yep, everything's good. And the cop goes, just make sure you don't get tickets out here tonight. And John's like, don't know what that means. Anyway, he goes, yeah, have a good night, fellas. And the cop sits there for a little bit. And he's on the phone with me and he's like, these fucking cops, dude. The cops drive off. Well, didn't no, didn't you, you say that they're like, you get the attitude you give? I said something like that to him because they, you know, were antagonizing him and they were like, you don't have to have a bad, bad attitude with us. And he's like, you get the attitude or some, I don't know, some shit. They were like, they were like kind of like trying to get him riled up, but John just stayed calm. Stay calm. They drive off. He's about to drive off. They pull up again, stop in front of his car and are looking at him. And he's sitting in his car and he's like, dude, these cops are here again. 
Um, and I was like, should I come out there? He's like, no, don't worry about it. And I was like, okay, should have gone out there. Um, anyway, he starts driving home. The cops follow him uh, down the street for a couple of blocks and pull him over. Were you in the car with him? No, I was at home. Oh, okay. So then he calls me and he's like, you'll never believe it. These fucking cops just pulled me over. I said, where the fuck are you? And he said, you know, I'm on the street in the street. I was like, okay, I'm going to come because you don't, don't, don't talk, don't talk to my man like that. Um, they pull him over and they're looking for anything. They said that he made an illegal right turn. Didn't do that. They're profiling him because he looks like a fucking, he looks like a fucking cholo, dude. I don't know. He, uh, and we live in like a very gang affiliated neighborhood. So they're profiling him and he, uh, they, they, He's sitting there and he's like, I don't have to answer any of your questions. Let me talk to your supervisor. So, of course, then that gets everybody all riled up. So then they call the supervisor. I pull up to where he's at. There are five cop cars. They have five fucking cop cars on my boyfriend for no reason. There are 10 to 12 police officers swarming his fucking car. Taking stuff out, going through Going it. through his car. They get him out and then they handcuff him and put him against the wall. And I'm like standing there like, what the fuck is this for? And I like, I'm like, I storm up there just like heart racing. And I was like, what are you guys doing? I was shaking. I was like, what are you guys fucking doing? And they're like, ma'am, calm down. You see how we're all calm right now? And I was like, yeah, because you're not the one being intact agonized by people with fucking guns dude what do you think he's doing and they're like well we don't know what he's doing if he complies everything's gonna be okay and i was like he didn't do anything he didn't fucking do anything so i don't know what you guys think you're fucking well, you, uh, you gotta calm down ma'am i'm like fuck you the way that the cops talk to you like it just it it fucking they dehumanize you you know mm -hmm. and i'm like you guys are essentially doing this for nothing and they're like well we don't know what's going on we're just checking we're just checking that everything's all good and i was like he didn't do anything he didn't do anything. So what they ended up finding out is that he, unbeknownst to him, has a suspended license because he has like five unpaid parking tickets. So then they got him on a suspended license and they said, oh, you, you're driving with a suspended license. He's like, I didn't know that. And they're like, well, now we have to impound your car. So they fucking tow his car to a parking lot cost $400 to get it out. Um, this is all because of unpaid parking tickets. And so you, but before all that, you FaceTime me. I FaceTime and, you. And Janine, and we're looking like where you guys are. And then you were saying something, you're, you're like, it's, I, I don't forget what you said, but you were like, you know, like talking to them or talking about them. And then like, they kind of like moved away from you, I guess. Yeah, they did. Cause I started, I was like, talking to you, but like, you know, so they could hear me. I was like, oh, it must be a really big night down at the uh, LAPD tonight. You guys are really busy. Yeah, this is cool. Really good way to spend fucking taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we call my brother, who's a lawyer, and, and he was saying that like, just obviously like, you know, stay calm. Don't, don't answer any of their questions. And he was like, what they're doing is completely like considered harassment and you can get them on the back end. Yep. So we have to call Eli later today. Um, but then, so, so then we go to meet you guys. Cause I did, I thought you were like, I thought they were going to take his car or something. And so we go to like save you guys. And when we rolled up and then like, I, so then like we found out that like you had your car there, but when we were driving up past them, there's still like two or three cars there and they're all just sitting in a circle, like literally laughing. They're literally like having a fucking gag. Five cop cars, five cop Ten cars, cops, five Ten cop cop cars. him, fucking handcuffed against a wall for no reason. And they're like, well, if he complies, we'll let him go. And I'm like, what has he done? Nobody could fucking answer me. Yeah, and he goes, he, and anything. He, he goes to the cops. He's like, I'm being profiled. And they were like, oh, what do you think? You're a cop. How do you know that's what's going on? And he's like, because you have no reason to pull me over. Like you, that's what you're doing. Your cops came up, your fucking officers came up and harassed me for no fucking reason. And then I was like, you guys gonna fucking hurt him? And the cop was like, why would we do that? And I was like, I don't know. You guys don't really have the best track record with not hurting people for no reason. So, and they didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, this is ridiculous. I was looking at all of them. I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. You're all, I was like, you're all fucking egomaniacs on power trips. I was getting riled up. I mean, you're lucky that nothing happened to you. Cause that's like, I know. Cause I started popping I'm, calm down, ma'am. Calm down. Fuck off. Fuck the police, dude. Mm -hmm. Fuck the police. It's just like they clearly like clearly Fuck that off. cop that had seen John made a call to his like little fucking stupid fucking friends. Yeah. And then had them go and like, you know, 
I just like literally go like bully him. They they they're just bullied him. They're mm-hmm. just fucking bullies with guns and tasers that can like fuck you. It doesn't ruin your night. It doesn't now he's out four hundred fucking dollars. He has no money. Like they don't give a fuck. These people are just out here ruining lives for no reason because they have nothing to do on a Sunday night except for roll up on my fucking boyfriend who's smoking a cigarette outside of my apartment and then follow him three blocks. Mm-hmm. Get the fuck out of here. And just like searching for something to get him Going on. through his entire car and then, you know, he was Were like... Were they like making comments on his stuff or something? I don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, but they that. had to get... You know, then he, I was like, do you need to get anything out of there? What about your AA book? So then they had, he was like, can you guys please get my, I have a big blue book up there with a notebook. This little Alcoholics Anonymous workbook. And I'm like, you guys are fucking assholes. Such fucking assholes. They just, and they that's are. not breaking his anonymity, but here's the thing. Um, I'm fucking dead. I know. It was, it was a very haunted fucking night. It was and a haunted night. It's just sad too, because like John's just such a sweetie. He's so sweet. And if it had been, literally, if it was like Lee outside someone, they wouldn't have done it to you. No, never. 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 They wouldn't have done it to you. They probably wouldn't have done it to me. No. They probably would have tried to recruit me. They would have. They would have said, you look like one of us. Yeah. It's heinous. It's fucking heinous. Like, fuck it. Fuck police, dude. I was just like, this is why... That's why people fucking burn your cars and stomp your asses out. Fuck you. No, Fuck oh officer. my God. I know, I know. We were, we were talking about how, like, you know, people were getting, like, there's some people that are like, you guys are burning cop cars. And I'm like, good. 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 Bye. They don't pay for them anyway. That's a taxpayer's money. Suck and my this dick. This is why I don't Supervisor. pay taxes. Yeah, because good. I don't like the police. Supervisor okay. Kim can fuck my ass. No, he can't. He wishes he could. Fuck him. Fuck he all of the he LAPD. Could. I know. Pieces of shit. You guys think that you're doing protect and serve. Protect and serve. Fuck what eat my fucking ass well at least there was five cop cars for literally nothing for literally nothing for for my boyfriend's suspended license because he has parking tickets that he hasn't paid because parking tickets in la are like upwards of a hundred fucking dollars and when you're broke and have nothing it's pretty hard to you'd rather eat than pay off a parking ticket you know what i mean you know what i mean no (laughs) no Fuck off. Fuck this. It fuck was so off. fucked up. Fuck law enforcement. But that was a fun, cute night. But then he spent the night? He spent the night. Okay, cute. I mean, he was shattered. You know, he's just like, it was not cute. I know. And they didn't need to fucking like handcuff. Like, but they he, they clearly just like wanted to, especially because it was like the same cop that had messed with him like a week before. It's clearly just this guy that like had it had him had, blah, had it out for him. This fuck is stupid fucking asshole. So hi, honey. We are brought to you by Awkward Essentials. What the fuck's that, honey? What the fuck isn't that? It's called literally a cum sponge. It is okay? a literal it's a cum drip sponge, stick, but it's a cum sponge. Okay, okay, so wait. So this is for our girlies who are getting cream pie. It's a uh, sweetie. It's called. Speak on it. It's, it's called the, the dipstick. It's called the dipstick, y'all. Not the, not the drip stick, honk. Honey, it's called the dipstick for the drips, the drip ick. Okay, y'all. Here's what it is, and here's what it is. Why isn't. are you going southern, honk? Honey, because that's what I'm trying to do right now. Because I'm trying to get the heck out of here. Because I'm trying to go see a movie with my damn girlfriend, who's not leaving any cummy tummy in my. No. So guess what? I guess if you're a lesbian, you don't need a cum sponge. Yeah, I'm in my gay, my gay, you know, era right now. So here's the thing. I'm not getting any cream pies. But back in the day, yeah. Back in the damn You're wild day, for that. I have an IU. So for all my IUD girlies that are getting cream pied, y'all are gonna want to stick this this what is it called, Lee? The the plunger, drip stick. Really. You're gonna want to stick this drip stick, a plunger. Or no, the exa- dipstick. It's, a drip. the dipstick. You're it's actually called the drip stick. It's called the drip stick. Yeah. Lee, oh, it's called the Okay, we're Hi, all in acid. Lee. The, the acid is the kicking in right now. Every day. I know, Lee. You don't even know. Because what you're what the one is leave, it, though? But what, you're leaving on. the cream pies, and I you're not the one experiencing the cream pies. But pie. everybody, can we just I'm talk not. about what it is? Because it's a soft medical-grade sponge designed to absorb excess cum after sex. A cream pie. So I, for all those guys that are leaving their kids up in you, just take this little stick, give it a little swirl. Baby, they're going to come right on out. Sounds pretty easy to use. Really easy to use. But no, but okay, but here's, it's, it's okay, so it's vaginal use only. It's yeah, not, not for the pussies, it's only for the pussies. Not for your butthole, sorry, 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 guys. So, yeah. Sorry to my anal kings. Only um, use post-sex. Uh, it's easy to use. It's blah, not blah. a tampon, girl, so don't get fucking crazy with it. Um, it's not birth control, it's not for an STD protection. But there's, but there's also something exciting in here. There's like a little first vibrator thing. So if okay. you girls are afraid of using a vibrator, which you shouldn't be, because they're great, unfortunately, they're much better than sex... And that's just true. You, you can get that is yourself true. a vibrator. Get yourself a vibe. You can get the Nikki vibe kit. Literally, Lee's it's a got kit, one. Y'all. Yep. Lee has one for his little clit. Lee's got a bunch for his little clit. <laughs> it's great for your first vibrator. Yeah. yeah. And, or and, your second. <laughs> or your third. And if you really want to support the show, you can go and grab yourself a Nikki vibe kit 
or the mainstream, which is a disposable pee funnel. You keep that on you. And, and you that guys is can think great. of us when you guys use your little pee funnel. A pee funnel is a great idea. It literally. So, so you can piss on the side of the road or at concerts. Yeah, because ladies, you know how hard it is pulling these fucking chompers out and squatting and oh fucking Oh my God. And then you're diddling. literally flapping in the wind. Yep. So or, put a drip stick up there, get a funnel out, and get the fucking vibe kit, and have yourself a night. God, yeah. And use code TTIME10 at awkwardessentials.com. Again, that's TTIME10. Awkwardessentials.com. Literally. So there you guys have it. We're going through. This is our fucking, we've had a week of weeks. So the cops don't give a fuck about you. The government doesn't give a fuck about you. We're all out here on our own. But we give a fuck about you. We give a a fuck fuck about about your stories. And this week is crazy landlord and neighbor stories. We we have a bit of both. We do. Um, we have, let's see. Our landlord is a nightmare. Our landlord, his name, well, I guess we shouldn't say his name, but he's a nightmare. It's he's it's such very an asshole. in 2020, you described him as someone who staples the, his hair to his head. He looks like someone who staples hay to his and head. And I think he looks like a fried green tomato with he hay does. stapled to their head with he, a beanie on. He does. Fried green tomato, stapled hair. Um, his windows are boarded up. He plays saxophone at two in the morning. He does. He used to walk around our apartment complex, I guess, playing the saxophone. But now he just plays it inside. And if you go, because sometimes my packages will get delivered over there. And so like, I'll go get them no. and then you can hear it. And you're like, okay. And then I locked myself out um, like a couple months ago. And when I had to get the key from him, he cracked the door no, open and it was like, he like was trying like not to let me see and just was like hanging the keys out. And no. it was so bizarre on like, I was a, like, like a, on a claw machine yeah thing. literally just like just take it and he's like and don't knock when you bring them back just put them in the mailbox and no, i was like okay no he didn't yes oh yes. he's insane yes no it's wild and then this is the same landlord that i was trying to text the group chat um for you know honk and our other roommate kate and i accidentally texted because it was our under our landlord's name. We, we called ourselves um, his girls. And then so I actually texted him instead of the group chat. A picture of a picture a of my of my butt in a thong. And then he never wrote back. And then finally I had to tell him that like someone's apartment was like, it looked like there was like a fire coming out. So I was like, hey, um, you might want to go check on that. And he and I was like, oh, and by the way, sorry that I sent you an ass pic. That was my bad. And then he was like, Oh, it's okay. I go to sleep early. And I go, I don't know what that has to do with anything, but thank you for the update. He's an insane person. And one time allegedly <laughs> you opened his mail and we saw that he had oh, I got a letter from the IRS and he owes like $50,000 to the IRS. And he's on like a $5 a month payment plan or something. So I don't know what he's doing there, but, but that's why we can get away with a lot. Got his mail. Place. All right. So shall we? Yeah. Let's get into it. This is a wild, um, headline pissed off tranny. Well, okay. All right. I had to get your attention with the title before I start this. Let me just say, did you? I have nothing but respect for the gay community. And as such, I will be addressing this neighbor by the gender they chose, not the gender they were born as, dot, dot, dot. Already sounds homophobic. Not the dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and not the chose. Yeah, not the chose. I know. Not you acting like you're doing them a favor. Oh, I'm going to respect hey, who hey. they say they are. <laughs> I'm such a good okay. fella. I'm not going to hate crime you. It's like, all right. <laughs> Hey, I heard the LAPD has some openings. You sound like you'd be a good... Yeah, uh, go on. Okay. Moved into my first apartment at the age of 18. I lived alone, but constantly had friends staying with me. This was a small complex, only 12 units in my building. Everyone there already knew each other before I moved in. They were much older than me, and they all liked to hang out and get drunk in the courtyard. Sometimes the vibes had cult-like energy. Ooh. The transsexual... All right. Is that what we call them? Uh, The transsexual lived across the hall. (laughs) When we first met, she was hella cool. I'm in my 30s now, so back then being different wasn't as widely accepted as it is today. Oh, we're in her, okay. She answered our questions and told us about her experience as a black trans. I really enjoyed her company. She smoked weed with us and hung out often. She claimed to be really religious and was always making homemade rosaries. That's pretty cute. One evening, my boyfriend, his uncle, and our friends were chilling at my place. My boyfriend's uncle is kind of special. By special, I mean he was into pills and didn't really have any filter. (laughs) Sounded like uh, Hmm. another Hmm. uncle we know. Oh. Was a nasty (laughs) old fucker that I kind of disliked, if I'm being honest, but I dealt with him. Our neighbor comes by to smoke, and we gladly let her in. At some point, the uncle started talking shit to her. He was out of line. She was so upset, she left, and I immediately kicked the uncle out of my home. 
Next thing I know, before I could apologize to my neighbor and invite her back over, she's at my fucking door banging on it, cussing and hollering. I look at my people and this bitch is literally eyeing the hole, scraping a fucking knife across my door. Uh, that's okay. That's wild. I was so fucking terrified. Like I literally saw the devil in her eyes. It was nuts. Side note, this place was haunted. Everyone had a ghost story. I even encountered some crazy shit. So I wouldn't be surprised if she's actually possessed in that moment. The next morning, I get a call from my landlord. She filed a bullshit complaint. And even though I explained the knife incident, I was kicked out of my place. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Don't have time to tell you about my mother's neighbor <laughs> while I was living with her. <laughs> oh, he thought we were pushing pounds out and called his son-in-law, some DEA agent. After threatening her with that DEA, the DEA finally showed up at our house. Five to eight dudes deep. My mom just let them walk in. Gotta love the south side of Indianapolis. What? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Huh. I don't know how it is in Indianapolis. Um, sounds riveting. But I... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But for, I know in California, it takes like six months for them to kick you out. Yeah, that's crazy that they were just like, able, able to... Able to like immediately... Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Well, goddamn. Okay. This one is called Crazy Buff Neighbor OD. Hi, y'all. Here's a wild one of my neighbor in my last shared apartment just before moving in with my current boyfriend. This guy, let's call him Henry, was super friendly with a weird streak. We didn't think much of it. Whatever, whatever. He was one of those classic holistic medicine um, SoCal white dudes that had a gold gym tank that ever so lightly covering uh, his nipples. Okay. He was, he was chatting us up and offered cupping sessions to all three of us girls upstairs, which I don't think any of us ever took him up on. They would always have the weirdest parties and people over that were always creating these crazy scenes. I offered a girl he was seeing a ride home once because she had been sitting outside the apartment duplex a long time due to being so incredibly inebriated. She didn't know where or who she was. No. I later saw her speeding down our street drunk driving after a final argument with this dude. Hey. Yikes. The finale to the saga ended when we got a knock on our door. From his roommate, he was letting us know that Henry had overdosed on opioids and painkillers a few days prior and had found him after he was unresponsive. Okay. His roommate had to kick the door down and call paramedics as he wasn't answering his calls and questions through the door for an extended period of time. It was intense, but the worst part was my nosy roommate not giving a single fuck and just wanting to know all the drama. I felt like she pretended, Joy, pretended to be closer <laughs> to this dude to garner attention slash info. I don't know, maybe just me, but give the family condolences slash necessary information, but don't ask questions you don't need answers to. Like what kind of opioids he OD'd on? Anywho. Okay, it was probably fentanyl ace by we get it. Yeah. Um or just pills. Um, any yeah. uh the roommate Henry lived with never moved out um that I know of to this day. I ended up leaving the a couple Whoa. months. Yeah, that's haunted. Ew. Literally haunted. I ended up leaving a couple months after um that cursed apartment complex, but most but most um mostly because of the terrible roommate. I now have a stable man and lifestyle that only involves a distant neighbor that we think has Tourette's. <laughs> And now that's on profiling. My favorite yeah, phase, profiling. my favorite phase we have heard while working from home is lick the clitoris in a fairy. Oh, in a fairly menacing tone. Hilarious. Thanks for your podcast. Or th thanks. Your podcast rocks. Okay. I'm so sorry. Lick I just had a fucking lick the clitoris aneurysm while I was reading that story, but that was really good. I hope I bet Lee, do you do that kind of stuff when you're by yourself? What? Yeah. Yell out weird. Well, things. Lee has apparently just a jar oh, full no. of pickle juice. In he does his, have a jar full of fridge. pickle juice. One floating pickle and yeah. a bunch of pickle juice. No, I'm very quiet, but I I do hear my neighbors uh, have loud sex. Do you really? Oh yeah, upstairs. Oh, you've told us that, huh? Yeah, I, and actually, in my last apartment, I heard my neighbors have very loud sex. Yeah. Um, and, and it's actually a theme uh, where I hear my neighbors have. It's a nice thing. A loud, loud sex. Loud aggressive sex. Do you know what they look like? Upstairs? No, I don't. I wonder if they're hot. Me too. Man and a woman? Yes. Lee, when you're like editing or watching TV and you hear them have sex, do you like turn everything off and just listen? Oh, yeah. Do yeah. you actually? No, he yeah, does. Do. You do you really? 100%. Do you guys think it's hot hearing people have sex? I do I not. Think, I think it's funny. It's like, it like kind of it's annoys like, me. It's kind of like uncomfortable. There, it is. There, there have been times where it's been loud and aggressive enough to where I've thought about like be going up there and being like that's the quite enough guys you guys relax like it's not that good 
It's not that good. Sex was never that good. Yeah. It's fine. Well, maybe they're doing best. it on Molly because it is that good if you're on Molly. <laughs> okay. And, and you it prove very a point. much is. You, make, you make a good point. Yeah. If you guys have never had sex on Molly, relapse, do it. And then tell me how it is because it's going to be the best you ever will have. Have you heard me have sex yet? At the house? No. No, oh, because I've been doing it. So I was like, can anybody hear me? Because I've never really had sex at our place before. Yeah. Just wondering if you'd heard. No. I haven't heard you with Janine. Guess lesbians you never aren't well. that loud. <laughs> Guess it's not that loud to finger bang, is it? What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> not much. Yeah. Not much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, honk, bonk, and awooga. That's Lee. <laughs> okay. Lee is going to listen to you. I've, I've written it. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I've written him before and I fucking love tea time. Hell yeah. I look forward to every Wednesday. Hell yeah. Yes, I know. It's giving wealth. Um, Hell yeah. We love having wealthy listeners. <laughs> and Sunday. Y'all really out here helping my depression. Hell yeah. Anyway, I used to live in beautiful in a beautiful community called Vista. Mm -hmm. I know mm. Vista quite well. I'm sure you guys have heard of it since Queen Gabby Hill's from O-Side and Harper was from SD. Yeah. Uh, Vista's a fucking nightmare, by the way. That's just me interjecting. Okay, okay. Let's read the story. Okay, sorry. Jesus Christ. I lived there with my boyfriend and roommate on the first story floor. And about a year after living there with no problems, the psychotic tweakers moved in upstairs. <laughs> First Isn't thing. that how? And also, can we? Okay, now, sorry, not me yeah. saying read the story and then me pausing, but that just remind me. I also lived in an apartment with tweakers that lived upstairs. It was ten people living in a studio apartment, and they got busted on the That's third brutal. year that I lived there. And they all the cops like lined them up outside, and I was like, "But you have to admit that's really impressive." Like. When they're tweaking, they will find a way to fit. It's like a clown car. Like, you can just fit is. them all in. And the thing I was going to say, though, is how come whenever there's tweakers, they're always fucking upstairs? Always. They're running around upstairs. like little rats. It's so true. And there is always, there's always so many tweakers in one household. Lee, I'm sure that you know. Because tweakers just don't give a fuck after all. You just have, like, one shitty, dirty mattress. Everybody's shooting up. It's yeah. fucking crack. Have you ever lived in, like, a trap house? Not a trap house. Um, but, like... uh like a shitty like college kid house so they're so like, dirty like, aren't there they are like 10 of us yeah like, a trap house is just like, a frat like, house without musicians like, yeah yeah there's just fucking like just piles of like food bags everywhere yeah. ashtrays yeah. yes it's always cold there's always like a leather couch it's yeah. all beat up you know yeah big cushions no hot water no hot water no, yeah god no a million dishes everybody starts eating out of like the pots you know yeah Making ramen. Yes. Yeah. 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 With, with the wooden spoon. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I've been that. I have been that. And that's before I was. Anyway. Um, okay. Wow. First thing was. Uh, first thing that was noticed was how loudly they would walk around upstairs. It sounded like they had goddamn weights stuck to their calves by how loud this shit was. These people had, I think, three kids. That's sad. So I get them running around, which really didn't bother me. But stomping till 2 a.m. was pretty ridiculous. I was also in night school and working a full-time job at this point in my life, too. Sleeping was like a reward. One night I came home from school, and about 10 minutes after walking into my front door, my boyfriend and I heard this loud-ass bang my dumbass thought oh, do you like my sound effect my dumbass mm -hmm. thought one of our friends was playing a prank on us and threw pop rocks at the window why the fuck would someone throw pop rocks at the window at 10 30 p.m i don't because know maybe they're friends with some fun folks yeah i don't know turns out it was a neighbor chasing their partner around the complex and tried to shoot them oh good after about three minutes the gun shot after about three minutes after about the gunshot, there were helicopters and cops swarming the complex. So you kind of understand the vibes of this neighborhood and the people living there. Rough. Rough. I don't know why I read it like that. Um, Today anywho, is like a hard... I'm just going to say to everyone... got a lot on my mind. Just, yeah. How, to, to, was it written like that? Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, no, like, no, it actually, no, it wasn't written like... It just said rough with a dash. And I thought they were going to like say something else. Dump. Okay, anywho. So, so wait, no, just pause really quick. So yeah. Lee said, was it written by, like that? And you said, yeah, it was. So no, it wasn't. And I just, so I just <laughs> wanted to just run that back. But no judgments because yeah, yeah. I honestly forgot how to read multiple times during that last story. I was like, the... Mm, Listen, neighbor. I have mm. an interview with a psychologist today to see to take a personality test for my eggs. So we're gonna see how we do. Oh, that's cute. Anywho, back to my tweaker neighbors. A few weeks after okay. the gunshot yeah, goes here's by, the thing. that didn't have anything to do with anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, here's the thing about Gab. We could be like, "Wow, what a beautiful day," and Gab. We could be like, "Yeah, so a little bit about me." And you could be like, "Well, I guess it is." So I'm taking a test today. So back to the story that's done by you. 
Okay. <laughs> a few weeks after the gunshot goes by, the upstairs neighbor have now started blaring metal music till the wee hours of the morning. Nice. Mind you, these people had metal children. Music? Metal music. Okay. Um, mind you, these people had children. So I was like, do these kids not go to school? Like, what's the deal with that? One night I was so fed up with their loud bullshit. And I went upstairs to tell them to shut the fuck up. When I knocked on the door, a man answered. He was covered in what looked like shitty prison or garage tattoo. Yeah, garage tattoos mm. and a long beard with rubber bands in it. It's giving white nationalist. With rubber bands? You know, probably to like make it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, no, because that was really silly. I just I just pictured a beard with like rubber, rubber bands like just like <laughs> tossed in yeah. it. Throw it at it. <laughs> A real, uh, a real gentleman, gentleman looking of a guy. I asked him to keep it down, please, because I had early, I had to work early in the AM and he barely acknowledged me and shut the door in my face. Oh. I was fucking fuming. Looking back, I shouldn't have gone up there. I should have just gone to the leasing office. I would soon regret this. Oh, God. Oh, what the fuck God. happened? A week after the situation, I just got home on a Friday night. My boyfriend had his friends over and they were having a few beers smoking. Typical Friday night shit when you're 21. Nothing loud or crazy because we had gotten a noise complaint before. So we tried to keep it all hushed. You had gotten a noise complaint? Okay. All of a sudden, I'm being jolted awake by his friends telling me that my boyfriend was getting beat up outside. <gasps> what? I was like, what the fuck? He was fighting one of his friends. He was fighting one of his friends like... What the fuck is going on? I run out of the living room and peek out the window to find my upstairs neighbor literally beating the shit out of my boyfriend. Ah. Just full blows to the face, pushing and kicking him. As soon as I saw this, I was like fight or flight in my brain. And I just ran outside. This was how I was last night with the cops. Fight or flight in my brain. And I just ran outside to try and stop it. But I was ambushed by these two girls. I'm guessing the girlfriends of these men attacking my boyfriend. They were fighting me so dirty and pulling my hair. This is white trash nightmare. Yeah. At the time, I was almost 200 pounds and these girls were drug addicts. So very skinny. I was whooping their asses. Okay, good. 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 Girl. And their boyfriend saw and started attacking me. No! I remember getting pushed to the ground, pushed to the ground and being repeatedly kicked. <gasps> I remember my life starting to flash before my eyes and begging, screaming for help. My boyfriend eventually intervened after what felt like five minutes of my ass getting handed to me. But in reality, it was probably less than 30 seconds. He literally saved my life. I ran inside and dialed 911 as fast as I could. I have no idea how those girls didn't take my phone because they were trying to take my phone and come into our apartment. None of my boyfriend's friends went out there to help him while he was getting beat up. I'm salty about that today. Oh, my God. Wow. What the fuck? The cops came, broke it up, and took the tweakers to jail. Good. Good. I mean, that's the one good thing that they've ever done. Our landlord didn't really do anything. Of course, they didn't, except make the neighbors move out. Good. She never pressed charges. <sniffs> Shitty, awful management. To make this short, I got a call from the district attorney shortly after all of this, and we weren't able to press charges because there were no witnesses to who started the fight. What? These people walked away with scratches. Meanwhile, we had broken ribs, black eyes, scratches all over our bodies. I had to get tested for HIV and Hep B and C because these dirty bitches bit me. Oh, not the fucking bite. I'll leave pictures of what we look like after. Sorry if this was triggering to anyone, but I thought I would share my fucked up neighbor landlord story. No, um, honey, this entire podcast is built for trigger warnings, but oh my God. Can we show this picture? Look, show me. Damn, bitch, you got fucked up. Oh my god, she looks so young too. Damn, you got fucked up. You're so, you're so cute. I know. She's okay, so pretty lips. Um, so pretty. Uh, um, honks on the lip hunt. Oh my god, her boyfriend. Oh, her boyfriend got fucking annihilated. Oh! Yo, what the fuck, dude? This is horrific. That's so scary. That's wild. That, that I, okay. That's fuck weird off. that his friends didn't go out and fucking help him. Because his friends are pieces of shit pussies. I mean, I guess. <laughs> well, at least the tweakers got kicked out. Dude, that's a nightmare. My first apartment in LA, um, there were these guys across the hall. Um, t they were twins and then had an older brother and then this buddy that would always come up. And Adam ended up ODing. So oh. that is on heroin. And then um, the, the brothers all got... Um, 
one night like the cops got called on them I guess and I only went into their apartment one time they would always come into ours and like hang out with us and they were like you could tell they were kind of like seedy guys but they were very very sweet to us and like they never like brought any like weird shit around us so we, it was whatever but one time we went into their place I forget why but like because it was right across the hall we like went into their place and it was very jarring and very shocking there was needles everywhere no what y'all were just talking about like dishes piled high in the sink a sink um all like the blinds were closed no. it was very very dark there's piles of shit everywhere i'm like what is going on like just food on the carpet like it was like very it, it was very very messy and i'm like oh no it's and then dark. the older brother's like yeah you guys need to leave and don't don't ever come back in here and we're like okay it sounds good and so we're like all right just you guys can come into our little cute apartment then i guess and then a f like a few months go by and then the cops get called on them and then yeah they got busted and then like they were handcuffed against the wall and like we opened up the door and the cops were like just get back inside get back inside we're like jesus and so we we're just like watching through the door and they were yeah handcuffed against the wall and then their mom got um handcuffed as well i guess because she was up there and she would like cook the the drugs and shit with them and then they all she was trapping yeah and then they all Wow, it's so and then, dude life is so can be so 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 bleak it can it really can be i have to pee so bad i'm gonna go pee okay love that okay, okay ready for the story yes okay the title is or the subject is i think i killed my landlord dun, dun. hello my adorable honks Oh, nothing for leave. <laughs> a few years ago, I was living in this tiny shoebox studio in a converted old Victorian house. Okay, it's giving romantic. It was adorable with a big backyard and a tree swing, a tree swing and a nice wraparound Haunted. porch. The only problem was my nightmare of a landlord named Bill. That's his real name, and I don't care. <laughs> Bill was a skinny, tall white man with obsession and anger problems. He would also nice. only approve young white women for units in the building because he said we were quiet and didn't make a mess. Mm. Well, as, he's as never been to our house. As we've been taught to be. Yeah. As we've been condi so conditioned to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it was giving we were his dolls in his little dollhouse. Oh, wow, when you put it like that, I am even more turned off. Um, Bill was constantly coming over to the building unannounced. Well, he's over here rubbing his hands and licking his lips yeah, while you're reading is. this. Yeah, he is. Oh, my God, with a semi. And to the naked eye, you could barely tell. But just because we've worked together for so long, I can tell. Okay. Uh, constantly <laughs> snooping around and invading our privacy, Lee. The worst part about Bill was a few months into my lease. He caught me and my bestie smoking a blunt inside. He banged on my door and I thought his little beady eyes were going to explode out of his head. And he just kept saying over and over again how I had disobeyed him. No. Whoa. No. Whoa. Not disobeyed. That's Lee when we don't wear shirts that show our tits. Okay. You have disobeyed me. You've disobeyed Papa. You know what I like to see on this show? Please. <laughs> you have to <laughs> what was it in The Lion King? It was Mufasa. You have deliberately disobeyed me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets trampled, honey. Yeah. From then on, he is spoiler alert for any. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a classic. Yeah. yeah the class you have deliberately disobeyed me. Yeah. Didn't it come out in ninety three? Probably. I was born then because I'm 30. From then on, he assumed that every time someone was smoking, it was... <laughs> okay, I was two when it came out. No, no. <laughs> okay, Lee just started sweating profusely. I don't know if it's bringing up this guy Bill or my jokes, but I'm getting lost. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Everyone needs to relax. You guys, my hair looks like pubes. Okay, let's get into it. From then on, he assumed that every time someone was smoking, it was me. At the time, I was teaching full-time and taking grad school classes on nights and weekends. Oh, my God. I know the person that wrote this, and I love her. Okay. And this man was calling me constantly, telling me he, sm he smelled smoke inside when I wasn't home. There was a gross hippie boyfriend across the hall from me who would smoke ciggies inside, and it was probably him. But he was absolutely relentless, and I started to feel stress every time I went home. Like, bro, it was one time. Yeah, ew. It got to the point that I couldn't really take it anymore. I'm a fan of the occult. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Yeah, the occult. The occult. Uh -huh. And I decided to buy a black candle for protection. And I did a little spell and carved his name into the candle. I kid you not, the literal next week, I got a call from a woman who told me Bill had died. No! Oh! No! Bruja! Okay, oh my God. Are you serious? No, here's the thing. I know who wrote this in and you are a fucking witch. This is wild. You've been a witch since I met you and you're a witch fucking now, bitch. I like to think that like this kind of shit isn't real. Maybe it's not, but like that's crazy. You love saying that, but then 
then we get off air and then you say you love it. So I don't know what's going on with you. It's giving fake, 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 liar, liar, liar. But that's okay. But anyways, um, put a spell on Gabby to tell the truth. But here's the thing. Yeah. I fucking believe it. And especially from this person you've written in before and I fucking love you. Oh my God. Stop. Bitch, you better DM me when you hear this because he I'm already going to forget. a week later. And I need you to tell me we got this candle because I got a spell to put on. Okay. I kid you not. The literal, okay, yeah, she carved his name into the candle. I kid you not, the literal next week, I got a call from a woman who told me Bill had died from a heart aneurysm what? while mowing the lawn, huh. and she would be taking over the lease. Huh. Bill was in his early 60s, ate vegan, and was act an active stud, who I would have called daddy if he hadn't been such an anal retentive monster. He also didn't keep any books with my rent amount, so I just made up an amount that was uh, that was hundreds less than what than what I paid. No, and that's when I paid until I left. Oh, looks oh like we're getting God. that candle. Oh, looks like we, we're getting that candle. We got some landlords I to get out of here. Yeah, I didn't want to say I killed Bill, but I think we can all say that I did kill Bill in some sense, and I probably wasn't the only one who wanted him dead. And that's on the power of manifesting. <laughs> love you. I love you too. That was so good. That was so fu fuck. I should have read that last because I don't know if a story could top that. That, that was, was so wild. fucking good. Uh, damn. That was a good one. Not bye that bye, you know Bill. we're like parents and we try and love all of you guys equally, but unfortunately. That's one of the best stories in like weeks. That is like one of the best stories. Really? In yeah, that was really fucking good. Uh, okay, not not Miss Stink. Really? <laughs> really? Well, she doesn't remember. It. I don't remember. She actually, doesn't even remember. She doesn't even remember the story. Earlier. No, no, she today. doesn't remember this story. <laughs> it's already. She, she's on TikTok right now, looking at some like fourteen year old saying that her lips look like swollen, and then she's like fighting them. <laughs> you wish I'm going through. Her news. We do have a lot of you we wish. do have a lot of stories, you guys. So it is wild. We can't get through all of them. Anyway, um, all right, ready for the next one? Yeah, literally. Hey, ladies. I'm a former North County girl living in Salt Lake City. Boo, and have a good one for you. When I first moved out here, I lived by myself with my two dogs in a fourplex. My downstairs neighbor quickly introduced himself and started making moves, showing interest. Now, I know it's not smart to shit where you sleep, but he said he was a butcher and could get me wagyu. 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 That's giving a culture. <laughs> wagyu beef and offered to make us dinner. So I was like, yeah, I'm down. That's expensive. Is it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't eat beef. I care about the lives of... Everybody. Well, I don't eat it either, but I can tell when something's rich. You have to have your rich radar on at all times. Mm. So when someone just buys you a fucking hamburger patty, don't ever talk to them again. They buy you wagyu. Talk to him again. You go, well, you're clearly not listening because I'm a fucking vegetarian. So then you wouldn't talk to them again. But whoa, you're right. But you would say, at least you're rich. God, you're so right. So Get them to buy you eggs. So we go to dinner. Uh, so we go, oh my God. So we get to dinner night. And I had a couple white claws before he got home from work. And all right, that, why does that confuse me? Okay. I was like, yeah, I'm down. So we get to dinner night why is it so wait no pause really quick why is today so fucking hard with reading because i'm feeling it too like so when i'm looking at the dinner night so we get to date oh, so it's the night okay so it's the night of the dinner okay night, that yeah. sentence it was really discombobulating me so we get to dinner night and i had a couple of white claws before he got home from work and told him so he proceeds to take six shots of patron to catch up that's so many shots that's a violent amount of that's shots. a that's, lethal that's amount a of shots night. that's a full yeah, night you're done yeah. you immediately are just done Go home. yeah <laughs> He then tells me that's something I would do. He then tells me he was worried about being late, so he just grabbed whatever cut of meat was on his way to, was on his way out of work. Okay, not what we agreed on, but I'm committed at this point, I guess. Next, he throws the steaks onto a cookie sheet and puts them in the oven for 45 minutes at 400 degrees. I don't know anything about cooking steaks. Uh, you you so wouldn't you, you wouldn't do that. Way you, you, you wouldn't yeah. do that. Really? Even in your most delusional state, you just wouldn't do that. Not on a cookie sheet. Not, how you cook. not for 400. No. No, you sear it and then you just like you put it on broil and then you just put it in. You, you're going to also lose all the moisture from it. Yeah. Really that's, quick. That's how you make leather. Do you think we <laughs> Interesting. That's how you make a fucking scab. Interesting. Do you if I got us yes. a really quick sorry to interrupt the story. If I got us a um air fryer, would you use it? Yes, yes. Oh my god, I want one so bad. Yes. Should we go have these on one? Yeah. You have negative seventy eight dollars. But how about I buy yeah. one and then you can pay me back when you can? Yes, yes, yes. I'll go to Target today. Okay, yeah. I want an air fryer. Yeah, no, I want one too. So fucking bad. Yeah? Yeah. So it's a good household purchase. It's a perfect yeah, because Joy took hers and I've been really missing it. She didn't have an air fryer. Yeah, that, the oven that she had, it was a type of air. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm getting us a real fucking air fryer. Okay. We're doing we're doing beans, we're doing rice. Yes. 
Get and salmon. I can make us such good fucking. Yeah, you got it. I'm okay, going to okay. Target today. Yeah. Oh my god, and I'll cook yeah. you the best fucking dinner. Yeah, oh my like... god. Okay, I'll make us dinner tonight. Yeah, I, I have that. a fucking show tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, I have, I have a another show. show. I have a show. I have a show. It's the only night I don't have a show this week. Me too. Let's do it. All right, put that air fryer. Okay, anyway, um, and that's an air fryer. Okay, okay. They uh, they were hockey pucks when they came out. Dinner was horrible, and he got drunk and called his buddies on speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. What up, dudes? Yeah, just fucking cooking dinner. I feel, I feel like you've been on dates like that. I've exclusively been on dates <laughs> like this. Calling the buds on speakerphone. You know what, Honk? You're the buddy that calls people on speakerphone. I, I am. You're right. I and am you the don't bud. tell people that the other people yeah. are in the room. They're like, hey, I got to tell you something vulnerable. Like, yeah, what's up? So cute. So cute. Yo, That's and then I'm over literally. here like, I don't know if I should hear it. It's true. I am this guy. Next day, I texted him that we don't need to hang out anymore. A couple months go by and I get into a relationship and my neighbor notices and gets pissed. Oh. Starts doing passive aggressive shit that leads up to him leaving chicken bones no! in the huh. yard. My dogs use, which could kill them if ingested. What a fucking freak. Not the chicken bones. What, that's uh, evil. Okay. Don't no, take out the dogs. That's also on some actual witch shit. That's like some warlock shit. Like leaving like the bones of scattered animals. Like what the fuck are you Wait, doing? Just, somebody just knocked on your door. Did they? Really? Yeah, yeah I'm expecting a package. What are you expecting? Okay. You know what it is. Oh. You know what kind of package he's expecting? Thank you. It's one of those fuckable torsos. <laughs> is it a fuckable torso? Yeah, it is. Is it your box of fleshlights? It's this box of fleshlights. Is it your box of reusable dildos? Yes, it is. Hunk, why would they not be reusable? <laughs> I don't know, Hunk. Whatever Hunk. Lee does is... No, Lee, don't run like that. It's you have my this... Box. It's my box of single-use flashlights. And you... Oh, sad. But he keeps them anyways Wait, and he reuses guys, them. Until they This stick. guy that I hooked up with when I was 20, he had a flashlight. And I saw it in his room and it was dirty. Ew. You know Lee has one. The, the fuckable torso is what kills right me. away, or else they start to they smell bad. And it did smell bad. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, back to it. And it was it. underneath a shirt, and I lifted up the shirt, and then there it was. And I said, "Wish I didn't just suck you off." Yeah, flashlights are weird because they. It's like it's a lot of work. Do you use them? I have in the past. Do they feel better than pussies? I mean, not better than pussies. I don't like the way he just said that. Not better than pussies. It took him a second. I know, but he was thinking about it because you were thinking about micro. Don't, don't crinkle your fucking nose at me, you sinful man. Okay, okay, okay. You guys, well, I have words. So this guy's leaving chicken bones in the yard. Uh, I leave a note on his door asking him to please not throw food in the yard, and he throws the note into the yard. Realizing he's unstable, I back off completely, hoping it'll die down. Months later, his dad dies, and he catches me outside and tries to make amends, saying his dad would want him to do better. Fuck you. You're a pussy. Well, well, you're that's pussy. not very 12 step. It's not. And I, you know what? I'm not feeling it today. I'm feeling okay. fucking mad. That's fine. We chat for a bit and he admits he was retaliating because I rejected him. Grow up. Hey, hey, grow, go to therapy. Hey, hey, guess what? She's not. You want to know what's not going to make her want to suck you dry is when you're being a creepy fucking chicken bone asshole to her. When you leave. Exactly. When you're turning into a little chicken graveyard, you think that's going to make her go, oh, no, you and lie. You, and oh. you want to know what's not going to make a woman want to fuck you? Uninviting her from a concert. That's not going to make you want to fuck her. You know what else isn't going to want to make you fuck her? What? Is when you call her mom and tell her that you've been selling nudes. That, now that is... Make you fuck him, you know? When you call her drunk crying at six in the morning, that's not going to make you want to fuck her, okay? Or fuck him, whatever. Who did that? And then he really? sent you all those fucking crazy texts when you were trying to go to Italy. Yeah, you know, they're all out there, aren't they? So we chat for a bit. He admits he was retaliating because I rejected him. Grow up. I said, it's all good. Glad you're in a better headspace and say goodnight only for him to try and kiss me while I give him a friendly hug. <gasps> Boundaries? What's that? Anyway, I moved a couple of months after that because it was too much. Also, my 60-something-year-old neighbor said he tried to kiss her too. Ew! I'm 34. But hey, at least he's not ageist. At least he's not. I'm 34 and he's 40. Insane. Wow. Ew! I really do really like, though, that she's 30 or whatever and then her neighbor's 60 and they can like bond. They have like a, like a chaotic sisterhood because he's trying to mack on all of them. He said, ladies, I don't discriminate. Yeah, he said, you can be whatever you want. Yeah. 
I like them grown. And you know what? That's more than a lot of men can say. It so is. Never mind. Get old chicken bone back in there. I like people him. are so unhinged. And you know what's crazy is that like the, so many of these people walk amongst us and are like, there's nothing wrong with me. Mm-hmm. Get help. But for the most part, oh my God, you guys, I just saw this fucking TikTok. This guy was on Family Feud and um, St- Steve Harvey asked him like, what are things in a in a in a marriage that you regret or something and he goes honey i love you but saying i do and then the girl stitches it and she goes so that man actually last month was just convicted for murdering his wife and i was like now tiktok is an interesting place to learn everything now is it a cancer yes but tiktok is a wild app i mean there are so many things have you seen that guy's page who's just like always walking in the everglades He's like in the ocean. Yes, yes. He's like in the Everglades barefoot being like, look at this fucking alligator. And it's like eating things and he's walking right past it. Yeah. He'll pick and then up like leeches and shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's yeah, walking yeah. barefoot at night in the Everglades. And then there's this guy. Have you guys seen the eel cave? He turned his mm. basement into an eel cave. No, why would you do that? Yeah, yeah. No, so he has like a normal house. And then you lift up and you see the, the eel cave. Not the eel I cave. And then the there's cave. the woman that's having her dad's baby. Because he had sex with her and ejaculated inside of her. Is that, I thought that was a joke. No, no. Because there is one. There's, there's a couple liars, but there's one that's like actually doing it. And documenting her process. Now, Did you just get so horny you almost passed out? Now, you know, my biggest fear used to be AI taking over. But hearing these things makes me think, well, and it, it's, it's time. Heavy. It's time for AI to take over. We have outlived our limit. Well, in San Francisco, they now have self-driving cars. You know, let the robots run the world. Let it be their world. We're I mean, it's about to be unsuitable for humans and animals anyways. We're dying off. Did That's you see true. all there's so many whales are dying right Climate now. Climate change is a fucking nightmare. Don't get me back in. Don't it's also get me a hoax, started. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't tell my dad. Sea levels rising, ice caps melting, fish dying. Oh, Gabby had a funeral, and then as the um the dead body is getting lowered into the ground, my dad and that's leans on over. Annette, uh, mm-hmm. to say it, my dad leans over as the as the casket is being lowered, and he goes, "You know, uh, what you saw in the insurrection on TV is not really what happened." And I say, "Do we have to do this right now?" And my mom goes, "John, I watched it on TV. What did you see?" And he's like. Not what you saw. And she goes, I can't fucking do this. I can't fucking do this. And then walks away from him. And he goes, she only hears what she wants to hear. And I'm like, we're at a funeral. We're at a funeral. For fuck's sake. We're at a funeral. We're at a fucking funeral. It's it's because of what fucking whatever his face Tucker uh, put up on is. Did Tucker put some bullshit? Yeah. So he put he got he got all this. They they released all this uh, security cam footage. And he put up all this security edited security cam footage of the people entering um, the Capitol. Yeah, uh, and walking around the Capitol. And they're walking and, around, and they made it look like they were like walking around peacefully and like doing. T- but, I mean, but we also saw that they were in a lot of those. Like they were all looked so stupid. They were just walking around, being like they, Pico, they were idiots. But they basically put together like 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 a like a quick cut of them walking around the capitol like idiots yeah and 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 he was basically like look they're peaceful and then my dad brought up he's he brought up blm and was like oh oh was it like how they were burning down uh burning down buildings in portland oh no that's something else so don't worry that's when the casket's getting lowered and then gabby you posted something that i thought was like really really like deep and um you posted it's giving funeral (laughs) it was giving funeral (laughs) Got a couple of responses to that saying, are you okay? So what is it not giving funeral? I had people send this to me going, <laughs> they go, there's that character defect. <laughs> they literally, people that I don't even know were in my DMs sending me this, yeah. your story going, hey, you need to check on her. And so then I sent this to Gabby and I said, this was, I hope that when I die, you guys do that at my is funeral. Is that the actual? No, no, no. That's just the graveyard. Is, no, that's she's, the so, actual graveyard you were at. So, so that's Ga- the actual graveyard I was at. That's not her grave. Is this the car? Right that's, here. No, that's, no, that's the, the curb. Actual, that's the actual graveyard you went. No, that was. I was at the graveyard. Yeah. Yeah. She's at the graveyard. Yeah. That was the funeral. And she said You're she was. Adi- she was it's buried. Gi- up. It's giving funeral. She was buried up from there. I didn't get a picture of where she was being buried. I thought that would be too insensitive. But it was just you know the graveyard. What if you took a video while she was being lowered into the ground? And said bye, Felicia. With my dad's and with my dad's voice in the background, being like, you know, the insurrection wasn't what you thought it was. <laughs> it's so- 
<laughs> but it's, you wonder it's something else <laughs> but but you wonder where you get it you know no, and that's like... why i screenshotted it for us <laughs> and like when she was saying the story she's like venting to me and i was being a good friend i was being she's like venting to me. she's like can you believe my dad and i was like i know that's so crazy like i hope your mom's okay but now that we're on the podcast i am going to tell you it's the apples falling just right next to the damn tree <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it was because it was actually giving funeral you know it and now yeah, me. It your mom's best friend just tragically died all of a sudden yeah, and you and your dad are like a scooter they be just terrible car no and then there's the rabbi crying while he's talking about you know he's like oh, this okay. he's giving like his you know sentiments and then my uncle goes god get it together i mean it's pretty unprofessional that he's crying and i was just like <laughs> it was a terrible accident <laughs> and the rabbi what a rabbi so he probably knew her yes he knew her very well yeah he did know her very so he's well he's sobbing and my uncle goes so unprofessional get it together <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Me and my family talk shit at places like that, though, too. <laughs> like me and my mom. I mean, talk Bobby shit Lee told at, us like, that Christmas story. Mass. Yeah, it's too shit like that. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, to an extent, it's funny, but I just your no, poor but it mother is. like losing her fucking best friend. I know my mom's crying. And then it's like you guys are fucking like scooter, <laughs> just like squawking no, right no, next to her. My, mom, my mom's trying to cry, and then she goes, "I haven't cried in fucking years. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I can't cry." <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> Oh, Pam. What a life, huh? What a woman. Oh, and then Dory, on the way to the funeral, before I was on my way to my mom's uh, friend Betsy's house, my mom's other best friend Betsy, uh, I call my mom and I say, hey, uh, can we get coffee on the way? And my mom's like, no, we can't. No, we can't get coffee. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll get some on the way to you. Um, and then she's like, okay, bye. And then she thinks that she hangs up the phone. She doesn't. And then she proceeds to talk shit about me for like three minutes. And I was like, so let me just listen to Betsy. And she goes, this child, I swear to God, she's such a fucking child. Can we get coffee on the way to the funeral? And then I hear Betsy go, oh, tell her to go fuck herself. And I was <gasps> like, I was like, I, I'm still here. And my mom was like, oh, sorry. Bye. It's Betsy saying, tell her to go fuck herself for me. And then you walk in with your coffee and then you're farting and shitting your pants on the long drive to the funeral. And then I send you something fucked up. And then you wrote back to me, you go, I'm at a funeral. <laughs> I sent her one of our many funny little inside honk jokes. <laughs> and I did say, I'm at a funeral. Yeah, but here's the thing. I, I sent it to you after I already saw where your emotional state was, which was <laughs> it's giving doing funeral. okay. Yeah, yeah. He said it was giving... a whirlwind of emotions. It sure was. And then all of my mom's other friends being there, being like, "I see you on Instagram." I say, "We don't have to talk about this right now. We don't have to talk about this Not right now." I see don't you follow on... me. Like, what are you yeah. doing? Yeah, yeah. No. And that was one of the friends that used to follow me and message things and be like, "Why are you posting this?" I'd be like, "Annette, get out of here." Annette, come on. And now she. Well, she now is, she finally found. Now peace. she is out of here. But because <laughs> my mom's friends were the ones always snitching on me, being like, "Why is Gabby saying stuff like this?" Well, one down, another. <laughs> Careful, Betsy. She doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't have a lot of friends. Because we so. just learned how to get that black candle, sweet girl. So I wouldn't be snitchy, snitchy. <laughs> that was so haunted. Well, it is because Annette's here with us. Oh, stop. All right, you ready? <laughs> This is the worst. <laughs> See, well, I did that so Honk doesn't feel so alone with her character defect. Yeah, thank I you. did that for Honk. It is giving funeral. Yeah, no, it gave funeral. And I get, <laughs> and this is UCB 101. I yes anded that energy. When we, I die, this if, is good. If I die before you guys, will you go to my funeral and post that and just say it's giving funeral? Oh, you're doing open casket and I'm going like, <laughs> and I'm taking a fucking picture. Even if I get fucking beheaded, you make sure. Like dog filter and shit. Yeah, oh my yeah. God, I'm taking my tits <laughs> Even if I die a violent death, if I get mangled by a bear, like, Make sure I have a fucking open casket. Put googly eyes on me and say she oh, would have wanted this. Now, here's the thing. Yeah. Pussy out or pussy? Pussy out. Pussy out. Is an open casket not on the face <laughs> but just on the pussy? No, pussy out, pussy out. Uh, pussy yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's only open casket. It's on your pussy. And you guys feel free to insert little, yeah, insert little things in there, little notes. <laughs> in the pussy. Yeah, put yeah, my yeah, cell yeah. phone in there because you know I'd want to die with my fucking phone inside <laughs> yeah, yeah, of yeah. me. And I'll do that for you, honk. <laughs> yeah, you And will? I'll get a video of me putting it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it feels weird because I feel like we're kind of willing this into existence, but I just want to <laughs> let you guys know if this is how I go, then... Now, this is how I need the, you wait, to show wait, up for me. Wait, what's yeah. the dress code for the funeral? Oh, God. What isn't the dress code? And I know that's right. It's fucking 
anything. Okay. Because I, I just kind of en- I'm envisioning me with my tits out. You would please. Okay, because I feel like that's you what you You know that little want. bra that you posted the other day? Yeah. That. Oh. The bikini. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. The, you have to be fully clothed. Yeah, you have to. You're be the one person that needs to be fully, fully clothed, clothed at my funeral. Everybody else tits out. <laughs> you. Yeah, you're you. tits in bussy away. <laughs> but you better have a fresh fucking wax for honk. Yeah. Because you no, no, know no. She okay, like... well, he has to come fully clothed. But he has to have a little, um, a little cutout in his asshole for the wax. Yeah. Yeah, Lee, you, I, and you're only allowed to do the waddle. I actually like the wax, and I need to go get another one. I'm okay. kind of down. You know, I've already forgotten about the pain, and I'm kind of down for it again. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Hey, sassy honk, gassy honk, and interrupting Lee. <laughs> I have enough stories. Sassy honk and gassy honk. Wait, that's really fucking cute. And interruptingly, I love that's these. I love. I do love that's the nicknames. One. That's a good one. I have enough stories to regale you with each of a long list of insane and bizarre individuals during my fiance and my prior living situations, from coming home to drunk strangers asleep in our bed. Why? Or the Huntington Beach meth head collective that would comment on our v- <laughs> vicarious lovemaking while we were trying to do laundry. The time we lived in Long Beach would best fit this topic. Of course, of course it happened in Long yeah, Beach. Of course. Because Long Beach is, I can't, is a shit pit. Uh, we I moved got kicked to a, out of the aquarium. We, we moved to a small studio in Long Beach and we knew the neighborhood was going to be special when we were greeted by an abandoned sofa near our complex that was proudly spray painted, fuck yo couch. Joy would have brought... <laughs> Joy would have brought that inside. We could already smell the adventure ahead. The first month, we were so delighted to discover that we had an obese shut-in neighbor who was facing ours that loved to get drunk and stay up late crying and screaming at everyone while polishing off handles of vodka. That's so sad. (laughs) Every time she opened her front door... The complex smelled like a city dump full of diapers in a heat wave. No. As she oh my stood, god, probably like Paris right now because they're really they're rioting. Really? Yeah. The the, the um all of the uh the workers have gone on strike, the sanitation workers. So trash is piling Screaming. up in the streets. It's so Paris. Because they tried to but here's the thing. It's so Paris. You okay, I don't it's giving you've never been, but um but they <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've been. Well, mentally you haven't, but um the <laughs> spiritually you haven't, but um physically maybe, but mostly you were checked out long ago. But um anyways, but and that's a giving funeral. But um in Paris they uh they wanted to raise the Bill retirement age. Ever heard of them? Oh, I'm actually talking right now, this guy crazy. But so they they wanted to raise the uh, the retirement age two years from 62 to 64 really yeah. that's so mean yeah. yeah and but then so but it's it's bad out and this is how you fucking get shit done in the country yeah. and then all of the sanitation workers went on strike yeah and so yeah and so it's like now like a lethal amount of fucking trash and i heard that i i heard an interview with somebody on the street and they're like we pay all these fucking taxes so that we can retire early mm-hmm. and, and the, it's the, the and the, the government's like People are living so long. We can't pay you. <laughs> they're like, we just don't have the money. Oh. And they're like, they're like, we pay the, all these taxes so that we can retire early. The government can go fuck themselves. Fuck. And, and every the whole city, the whole country is just rioting. Yeah, over, I do over, love that. Go off. Years. But also, I wonder what would happen if we fucking like. Where's that organization? Here? Maybe it's just because this country is just bigger. It's because this like- country wants all of us also dead at sixty. Yeah. So they try mm-hmm. to keep us fucking horrifically addicted to things, sugar, fucking, I don't know, all that. They want us dead. They want yeah, us dead. They, they do want us. They, they don't want us living for that long. They do want us dead at sixty. They do. They want us. And I love that. Okay. Anyway, here we go. And you okay. want to know why? Because you want to know why they want us dead at sixty? Because the nation is run by stupid fucking ugly white Republican men and none of them have any interest in women after the age of mm, 14. So they want us That's dead. That's already kind of pushing it. And it is pushing I would, it. I would go a little bit younger. So they want us dead because they don't want to look at any of us. They don't want to look at a fucking Ruth Bader Ginsburg. They don't want to look at... No. No, and they Oprah want Winfrey. us... No, they don't want... They, don't want, they want us dead. Mm-hmm. They want us all dead. Yeah. Well, if I can't make any money, I'll... One less... One less for them. One, one less woman is one gonna less be... bitch on the streets. Yeah, huh? I'm gonna one s- less yappy bitch on the I'll streets. I'll give my best to Annette because it's getting pretty hard out here. <sighs> God, <laughs> one less yappy bitch. Some of our fucking, some of you fucking stupid trolls online are gonna think that, yo, these bitches. I guess anyone can have a podcast now. Fuck yourself. Hey, fuck yourself. You video game playing fucking loser <laughs> in your basement eating hot fucking Cheetos. She came Eat in mad today. Eat my dick. Oh yeah. All right, Hunk. Oh, women, go. Oh, I guess anyone can have a podcast. Okay, okay. You're ugly. Yes, they are. Read the story. 
Well, your lips like that. Fuck you. Okay, no, now it, it always comes back to the lips. Okay, let's read the fucking story. Okay, okay. So, um, screaming at everyone while polishing off handles of vodka. Every time she opened her front door, the complex smelled of dirty dumps, a diaper. Okay. She proudly stood on her porch. <laughs> one less yappy bitch. We're going to make sure. Bitch. Yeah. Yeah, w- one less yappy bitch. Yeah, let's make that into merch. One and less make, yappy make, bitch. Make like a cover from Justin Bieber's One Less Lonely Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, ya- one less yappy bitch. Okay. She stood proudly on her porch in her baby Huey uniform. Okay. Of only a diaper and some manner of shirt. She added spice to our, other, our otherwise restful nights, but she paled in comparison to another neighbor. You've got some writing chops on you, Miss Thing. You're mm-hmm. painting a full good picture. It's giving David Sedaris. <laughs> As bad as the shut-in was at nights, we had different. We had a different type of menace that bothered us in the day. Let's call her Rhonda. Rhonda can only be described as a human vortex. <laughs> now, what does that mean? Some who once, some who once given any molecule of attention, someone who was once given any molecule of attention would then follow you like a hungry kitten and talk your ear off and get mad you didn't want to talk for two hours about her and her kids who don't talk to her. (laughs) We started ordering Ubers to pick us up down the street to avoid her spider web of pointless banter. I'm screaming. That's so out of your way. Yeah. Wow. Rhonda Rhonda had a lust for collecting, hoarding discarded junk that people would discard at the curb. She had hijacked at least three of these abandoned storage units and stores collected them in available storage units and stores collected them in available storage units so she could sell them on Facebook Marketplace. When social media didn't yield the payout she wanted, she would throw out the saddest garage, she would throw the saddest garage sales ever and be confused and verbally angry why no one came to the garage sale she held in a 15 foot wide back alley, which was hidden from the street. It was like the world's saddest goodwill. She had a fine collection of abandoned plants also. It's, this is giving joy. When she rescued, uh, which she rescued from the garbage collector, when the property manager cracked down on plants on porches, she didn't toss them. Nope. She moved them into her apartment and turned her back room into an indoor jungle. She was a nosy C word, say it, cunt. She was a nosy cunt and wanted to know everyone's business and made friends with the apartment of meth heads. She suddenly sided with those tweakers and went as far as to scream at us for calling the police to investigate a motorcycle that randomly showed up. Spoiler alert, it was stolen. Rhonda would beat on our door like the damn building on fire just to ask if we would buy her an Uber, then get butthurt if we said no. Okay, Rhonda can go fuck herself. She took an entire pallet of adult XL diapers that was misdelivered. Okay. I like her. She let her psycho dog crap everywhere until someone complained, then merely picked it up in a bag and left it in the middle of the walkway. That eventually stopped when someone started taking those bags and throwing them at her door. Ah! Oh my God. I wonder who. Totally me. I'm (laughs) screaming. Oh my God. You are funny. My fiance and I love the podcast and love our honks. Lee is okay too. (laughs) <laughs> fart cuck okay. written by fart cuck as Harper labeled me I don't remember you labeling anybody as fart cuck but I, I am do, screaming at that I do because terror was um, I should have known that she's a shit fl- uh, thrower she was but, um, flinging shit yeah I'm screaming um, at this she's like I love it but that's really fucking funny I, not someone was throwing it against her door that someone was me I love that I have two uh, really quick ones Hey, Honks, Bonks, and Lee. A few years ago, my boy, uh, my then boyfriend, now husband, lived in my hometown. It's a very small town, 700 people. Wow. Hey. No local police. Gabby and John should move there. <laughs> and filled with drugs, mainly meth. Lee's coming too. Our neighbors, <laughs> our neighbors were obviously meth addicts. Call my uncle. A lot of meth. Yeah. With one of them nicknamed Bump. <laughs> I'm now sexually aroused. One night we come home to Not find bump. our bump. One night we come home to find our neighbor's car on fire in front of our house. I head inside the house to take care of our dog while my man stays out to help these dudes. Our other neighbor who lives on the other side of bump also comes out to help. They did not want anyone's help, so they try fighting everyone. The other neighbor runs into his house and comes out with a machete and just starts swinging on these dudes. <laughs> Like a fucking what the fuck? Okay, the fuck, dude. Here, say what you want about meth addicts, but they are creative. They are funny. They are funny. Tweakers are funny. The, out of all the addicts, meth addicts are the funniest. That's um, so true. Lee, you should have done more meth instead of heroin. Um, yeah, but, okay. heroin's sad. Heroin's depressing. Yeah, meth heroin. Is funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. But anyway, uh, they did not want anyone to help. Machete. Do do do. Um, at that point, my man comes into the house, telling me to call the cops because no one is doing anything about the fire at this point, and it's getting worse. Yeah, it could fucking explode. Uh, the cops eventually come as we have to wait for the state police to show up. But at that point, everything calmed down. 
And then this person saw you um, with Felipe in the sand pit in Pennsylvania a few years back. And you oh called my me God. out for being, a, for being drunk and proud of my two DUIs. Just wanted to say I hit my one year sobriety. Hey! Y'all are hilarious and have me ca- cracking up every episode. It's giving. Now I have one teeny one. Um, we had mice in our old apartment and our landlord sent us a picture of a large cage Screaming. that the mice could definitely escape through and told us to drown them after catching them. That's it. That's the story. We didn't do it. Thank you. Congrats on your one year. That show was wild in that fucking sand pit. I was really unfunny at that point in my life. So thanks well, for sticking with us. Well, it wasn't about that. It was about her year of sobriety. So <laughs> thank you for writing in. Gabby, it's the same camera we end on. It's the same one we start on. So congrats on you. your mice and your rats. Congrats on your sobriety. Congrats on the meth heads. Congrats on your shit stained door. Congrats on the chicken bones. Congrats on Annette. Congrats for finding peace. Finally, congrats on Gabby's boyfriend for getting profiled. That's on Yes congrats We Can. On anybody getting profiled congrats on my bank account for going lower and lower every day how does she do it i don't know congrats, congrats on lee for being recruited to the lapd yeah congrats <laughs> on my girlfriend janine for having to put the whole honk family on her back congrats what congrats else? to congrats. everyone that, li- uh, that listens to this podcast congrats on my dad um being my dad congrats on your dad not being able to afford to go to the insurrection but he definitely would have if he could <laughs> he would have he would have yeah Congrats on my dad for finally getting off crutches because he just healed from his foot surgery. And congrats on you guys for subscribing to our Patreon and uh, giving us money so that we can pay our rent with that our rent is too expensive. We love you guys. And please subscribe to us on Patreon. Things get extra unhinged. We're going to do a lot of prank phone calling in the next coming episodes. I just said that for no reason because guess what? They're always fun and I think that Honk is good at it. Uh, So that's on Honk doing prank phone calls. And that's on Gabby being on Caffeine and Vivance and (laughs) she's on on one today and I love that and I love that energy and I love that um, vibe. So please subscribe to where you listen. Follow us on Instagram and if you like us what can you do you can tell your fucking honks yeah you can tell your fucking honks and you know what you can tell lee to cover up his tits for gabby's funeral (laughs) please love you guys and you guys are all invited yes open casket bye bye only pussy out though yeah no face (laughs) 